So, chlorine. What is chlorine? Chlorine is the chemical that's going to keep your pool clear, free of contaminants, and safe to swim in. To understand how chlorine works, we need to understand a couple of things about its function. First of all, chlorine functions as a sanitizer. What that means is that chlorine kills microorganisms like germs, bacteria, and algae spores. So that's chlorine's main purpose, is to sanitize your water and to keep it safe and clean. The other thing chlorine does is it acts as an oxidizer. Your pool is constantly being bombarded with contaminants like sweat, oil, junk left over from leaves and from dirt, saliva, urine, etc, etc. Chlorine has to oxidize these things, and what oxidizing means is it burns them out of the pool water, keeping your pool clear from cloudy contaminants that could cause scum lines. Studies have shown that up to 90% of chlorine is used to oxidize, which is why a lot of people have to use so much chlorine in their pools, and is why a lot of people with chlorine pools don't enjoy them, because there are alternative methods to oxidizing. So, by employing alternatives to oxidizing, you significantly reduce the amount of chlorine that you need to sanitize your water. So, by using alternatives to chlorine to oxidize, like potassium monoprosulfate, or Supreme Plus or mineral systems, or by using alticides as a maintenance dose to kill algae spores instead of having to use chlorine to do that, we significantly reduce the amount of chlorine that we need to use to sanitize. So, keep that in the back of your head. How is chlorine expressed? Chlorine is expressed as PPM. When you test your chlorine, you will get a reading like 1, 0.5, 2, or 3 PPM parts per million. It's not really important to understand exactly what that means. That's just how it's expressed. That's how you determine whether or not you have an appropriate amount of chlorine. How much chlorine am I going to have to use in my pool? Well, that all depends on a couple of different things. To understand how much chlorine you have to use, you need to understand something called chlorine demand. Chlorine demand is simply the amount of chlorine that you have to use to keep your water clear, clean and disinfected. Now, there are several factors to chlorine demand, and the biggest one of those is bather load, or heavy usage. The more humans you have in your pool, or the more dogs you get in there, or raccoons or whatever, the more bather load gets dumped into the water. This includes all of those organic contaminants, like oil and hair and sweat, and all that other nasty stuff. Other contributors to chlorine demand include heavy rains, excessive heat, algae blooms, phosphates, nitrates, etc. So, everybody's chlorine demand is different. So I can't sit here and tell you, oh, hey, you're only going to use two tablets per week and a pound of shock, because I don't know how often you're going to use the pool. I definitely don't know how often it's going to rain. I can't control the weather. I don't know if you're going to stay on top of your pH and your alkalinity. I don't know if you're going to listen to me and use enzymes or mineral systems to help you use less chlorine. I don't know any of that. So I can't tell you exactly how much chlorine you're going to use because every pool is different and every backyard is a unique experience. You're going to have to figure out what your chlorine demand is and that all depends upon those factors I just listed. So where does your chlorine come from? Your chlorine is going to come from two main sources. First of all, you have your 3-inch chlorine tablets. A lot of people think they can just use as many 3-inch tabs as they want to keep their pool chlorinated and clean. This simply isn't true. The reason is, the chlorine compound inside of chlorine tablets is called stabilized chlorine because it's assembled with cyanuric acid. Cyanuric acid is sunblock for your chlorine, protects the chlorine from the UV rays of the sun. However, if you use too many tablets, you will add too much cyanuric acid to your pool, at which point you get a detrimental effect on the sanitizing power of your chlorine. When cyanuric acid exceeds levels of 90 parts per million in your pool water, chlorine ceases to be able to sanitize, meaning it won't be able to properly kill algae and it won't be able to properly remove bacteria and germs. In fact, 
in some states, it is illegal to have your cyanuric acid above 100 parts per million because it becomes a cesspool for disease and algae. There are several different forms of granular chlorine. You have sodium dichlor. Sodium dichlor is a stabilized granular chlorine. If you're using chlorine tablets, avoid sodium dichlor at all costs. Otherwise, you will most definitely overstabilize your pool. So, write this down or beat this into your head. Do not use sodium dichlor in your chlorine tablet pool. Calcium hypochlorite is another form of chlorine shock. This is the one that you're going to want to use normally for your swimming pool. It's got a high level of chlorine that's immediately available, but it does not contain any cyanuric acid. However, calcium hypochlorite does have calcium. So overuse of calcium hypochlorite will put too much calcium in your water, which will lead to a buildup of scale. Potassium monopersulfate is another powdered oxidizer. It is a non-chlorine shock. It's a non-chlorine granular oxidizing compound. It doesn't have any cyanuric acid. It doesn't have any calcium, but it also has no chlorine. However, potassium monopersulfate, when used at regular doses of one pound per 10,000 gallons of water, will clean out organic contaminants from your pool, thus allowing the chlorine from your tablets to do its job of sanitizing. So, if you have a chlorine tablet pool, it's ideal for you to use a rotation shock between calcium hypochlorite and potassium monopersulfate. This will help to keep your pool clear of contaminants without adding too much calcium to the water or overchlorinating and having your pool become irritating. So tablets and some form of granular oxidizer like calcium hypochlorite and potassium monopersulfate are what you need to oxidize and sanitize your water. How many tablets and how much shock you have to use in your pool completely depends upon your chlorine demand and how many alternative methods to sanitizing and oxidizing that you employ. Trust me, the more alternatives to chlorine that you use, the happier you will be with your pool experience. Okay, so how much chlorine do you actually need to hold in your pool? Well, that depends upon several factors. Let me pull up a chart here so we can visualize this. One of the most important factors in knowing how much chlorine you need to hold is going to be water temperature. That's listed on the left. The other important factor is what chemical regimen are you using? Are you using strictly chlorine or are you using some alternative methods for oxidizing and sanitizing? As you can see, the chlorine pool has to regularly hold almost double the amount of chlorine that pools using alternatives to chlorine have to hold. So, 75 and warmer. Chlorine pool needs to hold between 2 and 3 parts per million. A pool utilizing alternatives like enzymes, mineral systems, Supreme Plus, and algicides at a maintenance dose only needs to hold between 1 and 1.5 parts per million. Springtime, 55 to 75 degrees. Chlorine pool needs to hold in between 1.5 and 2 parts per million chlorine. Again, Pools utilizing alternatives like Supreme Plus, enzymes, phosphate removers, algicides at maintenance dose only needs to hold 1 to 1.5 part per million. When your pool water drops below 55, algae and bacteria both have issues with growing because it's too cold. So, you only need to hold between 0.5 and 1.0 part per million chlorine for a regular chlorine system. For alternatives, you need to hold between 0.25 and 0.75. You can hold less than one and be okay. What does holding chlorine mean? Well, holding chlorine means you test your free chlorine and it is within the proper range as we just saw on that chart. Let's take a look at how to test your water for chlorine using a Taylor K2005 test kit, which is the test kit we recommend you use to keep your water properly balanced. Hi Riverbed family, I want to tell you how to use a Taylor K2005 DPD test kit. The Taylor K2005 is the test kit that we use on all of our maintenance routes out in the field. It's very simple to use, it's very user friendly, and it's made by Taylor. Taylor is a water treatment company. That's their business. That's all that they do. Consequently, it seems that their test kits are more accurate and more reliable than the other ones on the market. The K2005 is the go-to test kit for your residential pool. 
If you're taking care of the pool on your own, you need to have a K2005 so you can do proper water testing. The other beautiful thing about Taylor's test kits is that they're very user friendly. If you look at the Taylor K2005 reagents, you'll notice that they're all labeled and color coded. The colors match up to the instructions that are in the lid for each different test. So if you'll notice the yellow, yellow is the chlorine test. It's labeled and color coded so that you know exactly what you're testing for with those reagents. This kit is very user friendly even though it is an advanced kit that can test for lots of different chemicals. So let's go ahead and get started on a full water test. The first step to any successful water test is taking a proper water sample. You need to make sure that your pools are running for about two hours and when you collect the water sample it needs to be at an area of average depth in the pool. That means not the deep end, not the spa, and not the shallow end, but where your pool begins to slope from the shallower end to the deeper end. If you have a play pool that's going to be in the middle where the pool goes from three feet to five feet. So right on that slope where the shallow end goes towards the deep end, you're going to want to make sure you're away from any jets or returns. Take your water sample bottle, make sure you go at least 18 inches below the water surface before water begins entering the bottle. Take a full sample from 18 inches below the water surface at an area of average depth. That is how you get a proper water sample. Now that we have the water sample, we can begin testing it. If you'll take out the plastic comparator inside of the K2005, we can start this process. You'll notice that there are two compartments. One is a little bit skinnier and is more rectangular, and the other one is rounded and larger. If you look on the outside edges of both of these compartments, there's different notches with different numbers. This is simply just different amounts of water. You're going to need different amounts of water for each test. The very first test that we do is for chlorine. Free, total, and we can also get combined. So, the first thing we need to do is take your pool water, take the smaller compartment on the comparator, and fill it up to the 9 mark on the side. Now that you've done that, take the very first yellow bottle. It's R0001. We're going to need to do 5 drops of that into that water sample we just poured. When you do a drop with any reagent, you need to make sure that the bottle is completely vertical and upside down. This way it ensures that you get a full drop of reagent. If you kind of tilt the bottle to the side or you don't quite have it upside down enough, you may only get half to three quarters of a normal drop. So we want to make sure that it's completely vertical upside down. Now do five drops of the triple zero one. Okay, immediately follow R triple zero one with five more drops of R triple zero two. Now, you can either use the rubber cap provided or use your thumb, put it over the top of that compartment and shake it up. Hopefully the water turns some sort of pink color. This would indicate that you have free chlorine. To figure out how much, you need to either take a white piece of paper or use some sunlight, hold the comparator up into the white piece of paper into the sunlight and match the pink color to the pink underneath the CL. Should give you some sort of number like 1.5 to 2 or 2 to 3 or, or something like this. That reading is what we call free chlorine. Free chlorine is the chlorine in your water that's available to fight off contaminants. Free chlorine should be tested every 2 to 3 days and maintained in the proper range. If you're not sure what the proper range is, please see our chemistry school so that you know exactly where your chlorine needs to be. The next reading that we need to get is for total chlorine. To achieve this, you take the last yellow bottle, it's R0003, and do five more drops into the same sample. Again, either using the caps provided or your thumb, shake up the compartment and compare it by a white background or into some sunlight. This reading is called total chlorine. Total chlorine is telling you the entire amount of chlorine you have in your pool, both the free available chlorine and any chlorine that may be actively tied up with a contaminant and oxidizing or sanitizing it. The last chlorine reading you need to get is called combined chlorine. And what you do simply is take your total chlorine reading and subtract from that the free chlorine reading. So, if your total chlorine is 2 and your free chlorine is 1, then your combined chlorine reading is 1. 
And what combined chlorine is is simply chlorine that's attached to a nitrogen or ammonia-based contaminant and is oxidizing it. Sometimes this combined chlorine can turn into chloramines, at which point you will have to shock the pool to 10 times the amount of combined chlorine. So what that means is if your combined chlorine is one, you need to shock your pool to 10 parts per million free chlorine in order to break through the combined chlorine. Other solutions to combined chlorine is using shock and swim or regular use of enzymes which will break down nitrogen and ammonia based contaminants and prevent combined chlorine from occurring. Okay, so that's how we test for chlorine. The next test is the red bottles and the red bottles are for pH. Okay, so as you saw, there's three different variables for chlorine that are important. The first is free chlorine. This is the important one. This is the one that you want to test every two to three days and ensure you're regularly holding the proper amount based on that chart that I just showed you. So, how do you get free chlorine? Well, your pool needs to be completely free of contaminants, completely free of bacteria, and algae needs to be suppressed and under control. And then you will start to hold chlorine. So, if you're only using chlorine shock and chlorine tabs to achieve that, you're going to have to use a whole ton more in order to totally clean your pool. But if you're using enzymes and algicides at maintenance dosage and you're using Supreme Plus, then you're going to be able to use less chlorine to hold the amount that you need. This makes for a better swimming experience and also is less frustrating. So, free chlorine, what that is, free chlorine is the amount of chlorine in your pool that is free and readily available to get rid of contaminants, bacteria, suppress algae, etc. Okay? That's the one you need to test every two to three days. And you want to hold free chlorine. Then you have total chlorine. Total chlorine is the entire amount of chlorine in your pool. This includes your free chlorine and any chlorine in your water that may be doing battle with algae or bacteria. The third reading is combined chlorine. Combined chlorine is telling you, hey, you've got something in your water that is combined with some chlorine and is actively doing battle here to get rid of it. Sometimes combined chlorine is also representative of something called a chloramine. A chloramine is that smelly, nasty, irritating chlorine that you find oftentimes in hotel pools. Chlorine molecules attaching to a nitrogen or ammonia based contaminant. And it just won't, it, it, it just doesn't get rid of it right. So it hangs around in the pool and it becomes smelly and irritating. It is very common to have chloramines in a pool that utilizes strictly chlorine to do its disinfecting and its oxidizing. Let me set up an example for you. Let's say you have one part per million combined chlorine. In order to remove that one part per million combined chlorine, you will have to shock the pool to 10 parts per million free chlorine. That's ridiculous. Non-chlorine shock like potassium monopersulfate is able to burn out and break down ammonia and nitrogen based contaminants. So are enzymes. That's why it's important to use them. Typically in pools that utilize enzymes and non-chlorine shocks, we don't have a problem with chloramines. So, you can see just from the combined chlorine example how important alternatives to chlorine are. How do I properly use three inch tabs? Okay, so we have established that using too many chlorine tablets is a bad thing. So what is too many chlorine tablets? Well, if you have a chlorine floater and you regularly just fill it up with chlorine tabs, every time it seems empty and let it float on, that's chlorine tablet abuse. If you have an inline feeder and you're regularly filling it up to the top, that is chlorine tablet abuse. Typically, an inline feeder that will hold 10 to 11 tabs is able to chlorinate up to 100 to 120,000 gallons of water. That is too much chlorine for your backyard pool. Unless you're Jerry Jones, you don't have a pool that size in your backyard. Typically, the rule of thumb for chlorine tablets is one tablet per 8 to 10,000 gallons of pool water every week. So, set up an example for you. A 20,000 gallon pool in the middle of the heat of the summer is only going to use a maximum of three tablets per week. When adding chlorine tablets, you only add them once a week. So if you pick Monday as your day to add tablets, you go out on Monday and you add your tablets. 
If Thursday comes along and the tablets are gone, you don't need to add anymore. The reason is, just because the tablets aren't in the feeder or in the floater, doesn't mean that the chemical isn't in the pool water. So don't panic if, if before a week is up, your tablets have dissolved. That's not necessarily a bad thing. So pick a day to add your chlorine tablets and stick to that day and that day only. So I said that it's typically one tablet per eight to 10,000 gallons of water. What does that mean? Well, let's say that in July, you know there's a week where you're gonna have just a bunch of people over and they're just gonna be swimming all the time. You have a 20,000 gallon pool. Okay, that week you're gonna wanna use about three tablets because you know you're gonna have heavy use. You're also probably gonna need to shock a couple of times because of so much bather load. Let's say the week after that though, you know, hey, we're only gonna be in the pool for a couple of days. You probably only need to use one tab per 10,000 gallons. So you probably only need to do about two tablets. So, how do I know if I need to shock? Shocking should only be done as needed. If you're only using chlorine to sanitize and oxidize your water, you will probably in the summertime have to shock a minimum of once per week. Maybe even two to three times. I don't know. It all depends on the weather and how much you have to use the pool. So, you don't really just want to shock for the sake of shocking, unless there's a special occasion, such as a thunderstorm. If you know it's about to rain and it's about to rain heavily like it does in Texas a lot, you're going to want to go ahead and do a shock to your pool. A typical shock is one pound per 10,000 gallons of water. During a rainstorm, if you're using non-chlorine shock, you're going to want to use a chlorine-based shock at that time because rain can introduce algae spores and other things that need to be sanitized that non-chlorine shocks can't do. So if it's a thunderstorm, definitely use a chlorine shock to shock your pool before the thunderstorm hits. And when I say that a thunderstorm is going to hit, I don't mean that the meteorologist said, hey, we got an 80% chance. I mean, you look outside, you can hear thunder and lightning, you can smell the rain. At that point, yeah, let's shock. If you have a giant party, the bunch of people over, let's say you got 10, 15, and the neighbors come over, you're having a barbecue, people are drinking, eating food, jumping in the pool, having a good time. After the party is over and everyone's done swimming, you want to shock the pool and do a full shock. Why? because they definitely just exhausted all chemical protection that you have and have introduced a ton, a ton of organic contaminants. If you wake up one night and hear a funny noise, you go outside and you find that there's 22 raccoons swimming in your pool and bathing and doing all their thing, you're going to want to get the raccoons out of the pool and go ahead and shock it. Wildlife contamination is crazy. I've seen crazy, crazy stuff. A lady came into the store one time with a video, she had like 200 something frogs in her pool. She's had a swarm of frogs in there. Things like this happen. Oftentimes people get ducks. Ducks like to mate for life and they'll come use your pool to have their babies and teach their babies to swim and bathe and stuff in your pool. When you have wildlife contamination, you need to shock the pool. They can introduce diseases and bacteria and algae and all kinds of nasty stuff that you want to get out of your pool as soon as you can. Those are some situations where you don't really need to test your chlorine before you shock. However, under normal circumstances, you don't want to shock unless you're sure you need to. Let's say you test your pool and it's got a part and a half per million free chlorine. Why would you need to shock? Let's say that you tested your water and you have one and a half parts per million chlorine and you haven't shocked in two weeks. Don't shock. You don't need to. You're holding chlorine. Everything is fine. Now let's say you have like a half a part per million free chlorine. Well, you probably don't need to do a full two pounds of shock for a 20,000 gallon pool. You can probably get away with only doing one pound to help supplement the chlorine that you have. So shocking is an as needed thing. You can adjust the amount that you need based upon your chlorine reading. By using alternatives to chlorine, like mineral systems, Supreme Plus, enzymes, maintenance doses of algicides, you will severely reduce the amount of shock that you have to do throughout the year. It's also a really good idea to use a non-chlorine shock in a rotation method. Non-chlorine shock is a great way to keep your pool free of organic contaminants, especially from people. It's also a great quick shock. Let's say that you're having a big gathering or a big party or a barbecue, and there's like tons and tons of people, 15, 20, 30 people at your house. They're all swimming, having a good time. You notice halfway through the party that, hey, look, the water's getting a little cloudy and weird. 
uh, maybe I need to do something about this. Get everyone out of the pool. Go get your non-chlorine shock. Say so you have a 20,000 gallon pool, you'll need to use two pounds of non-chlorine shock. You can add it within 15 minutes. Your pool will clear up, it'll look better, and people can swim again. There's also no calcium, no cyanuric acid inside of that shock. So you know that you're not overstabilizing or adding too much calcium into your pool. Rotating between calcium hypochlorite, which we recommend to use Power Magic Super Oxidizer, and non-chlorine potassium monopersulfate shock like shock and swim will help you to control your chlorine levels as well as your calcium levels. So, how do I use these alternatives to chlorine and what alternatives should I use? This is what we recommend you do in the season. In season, from mid-March all the way to the end of October, you're going to want to use a mineral system. If Riverbend built your pool, chances are you have a Nature 2 vessel. That cartridge has to be replaced every six months. Mineral systems are copper and silver, aluminum and zinc, chelated metals that help to sanitize and suppress algae, which severely reduces your chlorine needs. If you don't have a Nature 2, Pool RX is the perfect solution for you. Pool RX looks like a little basket. There's a blue one for pools up to 20,000 gallons, and there's a black one for pools up to 35,000 gallons. You use it, it lasts for six months. What you do is you put it in your pump basket. Pool RX is copper, silver, zinc, and aluminum, chelated metals so they won't stain your pool, that, that are introduced into your water to help you kill algae, sanitize your bacteria, thus freeing up chlorine, enabling you to use less chlorine to hold the chlorine that you need. The other thing we recommend is that you use a combination enzyme and phosphate remover product like Pool Perfect Phosfree or CV700. These are liquids that you add on a weekly basis. What they do is they break down organic contaminants like makeup, sweat, oil, these nitrogen and ammonia based contaminants that otherwise could create chloramines in your water, enable you to use less chlorine, and they also remove up to 500 parts per billion phosphates. So they'll keep your pool clear of phosphates, which is algae food, and they also remove the organic contaminants, which takes up tons and tons of your chlorine. The other thing you can do is use Supreme Plus. Supreme Plus is a mixture of sodium tetraborate and pH neutral chemicals that help to suppress algae by controlling carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is one of the five main things that algae needs to bloom. The other thing that Supreme Plus does, it helps to stabilize your pH. The more stable you can keep your pH, the better your pool will look and the better chlorine and other chemicals will function. The other thing that we recommend you do to keep your chlorine levels low is use maintenance doses of an algicide like Polyquat 60. Most of the time people think algicides are only used for killing algae blooms once they become a problem, but algicides are honestly better to be used as a preventative maintenance product. Polyquat 60 only requires 3 ounces a week per 10,000 gallons of water. What that's going to do is actively kill algae spores that have been introduced to your pool. That way they can't take hold and bloom. If you really want a trouble-free pool, the best thing to do is utilize as many alternatives to chlorine as you can. Let me give you a real-life example of a very large pool that utilizes all the alternatives that I suggested to hold the proper amount of chlorine by using an extremely low amount of chlorine. Okay. Let's set this up. It's a 37,000 gallon pool, okay? So right off the top, let's do a little bit of math. How many tablets per week in the summer in a heavy usage time are they gonna need to use to properly chlorinate their pool? So, see, four, 32,000, so right around five tablets per week, okay? Let me explain what they do in their pool. 37,000 gallons, they do Supreme Plus, what that does is help stabilize pH and control algae. They use maintenance doses of Polyquat 60 during the summertime. They use Pool RX during the summertime. They also only shock their pool with shock and swim. They do not use chlorine shock. They also use CV700, which is the enzyme and phosphate remover product. The enzyme breaks down all the organic contaminants from bather load and from rain and stuff like that. And the phosphate remover keeps phosphates gone so algae doesn't have a nutrition source. 
Every time we test their water during the summer, they hold between 1 and 1.5 parts per million free chlorine using only three tablets a week. That is their only chlorine source. And it works because all these alternatives work together to remove the contaminants from your water without needing chlorine to do the job. So the chlorine that you use from your tablets can go towards doing its job, which is sanitizing and then holding chlorine. This stuff works. By utilizing alternatives, you will use less chlorine and you will enjoy your pool that much more. This concludes the section on chlorine. To continue chemistry school, please see the video for pH. Thank you for choosing RiverbendPoolSupply.com for all your pool needs. Thank you.